live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in the hang space at VMworld 2016. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. It's our flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal for the noise. This is our seventh year covering VMworld, and every year it gets bigger and better, The Cube and the guests and the content. And I'm here with the person who's made it happen from day one, Robin Matlock, who's the CMO of VMware. First of all, congratulations on a great event, and thank you for supporting The Cube for seven years. It's been fantastic and it gets better every year. Thanks uh, to you. Well, I'm thrilled to be here and you know, I'm a huge fan of theCUBE. You're an integral part of the program. So here we go again, John. We're ingesting <laughs> all the data, we're analyzing it, we're providing great, great videos, a lot of volume. Um, but what, what an interesting thing I want to get your take on because you have ridden the VMworld uh, bus for a very many long time. <laughs> Don't remind changed, me. And it's changed and grown. And one of the conversations we've had all week is what I've been calling ecosystem 2.0. What is the ecosystem going to evolve into for VMware and VMworld? And it's been interesting, and so I want to get your take on it. And one of the things that was striking was um, what Pat Gelsinger said to me yesterday on the Cube interview was, VMware is not only not a pro one product company anymore, mm -hmm. it has grown to be a multiple set of products and technologies, which has created a diverse co and growing community. Absolutely. So can you add some color to that, because this has been, it's always been the community is very strong in VMware, VMworld and VMware, so, but it's, it's evolving. That's right. It's not right. necessarily shifting and, and changing it in a bad way, it's just growing and morphing. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting topic, it's, and it's a rich topic, because it, as VMware's business is changing, first of all, our value about the community has never changed. I mean, we really value an ecosystem. Our customers want to expect that we work and play really well with the variety of technologies that are in their environments. But of course, as our business and portfolio has grown and expanded, the nature of the types of companies that are engaged in and around us shifts and changes too. And if it doesn't, then we're probably all going to have some issues down the road. So I think it's a lot driven from customers. What do they want all of us vendors to do to work together? Together, so their life is easier. Yeah, and the other thing, David Floyer is the CTO of Wikibon, who's very uh, uh, technical, uh, comment that it's the best VM world ever. From a statement of direction standpoint, it's very clear that the data center role that VMware has and this inter-clouding, which we call, Pat calls it, cross-cloud, is a real rich area for innovation and growth. Oh, I think we're just on the cusp of the potential of that. So you heard us talk about the cross-cloud architecture, and we broke that down into a few things, like the VMware Cloud Foundation, that's essentially the software-defined data center stack, all with lifecycle management that you can consume on-premise and off-premises, the IBM partnership, the opportunity for the vCloud Air network partners. I mean, there's just so many, the CISOs are involved in this. There's just really, it's almost like a whole economy that can integrate into this broader you know, offering. Okay, so with all that in mind, how how are you managing the logistics? Because you know it's, it's pretty obvious that VM World is back in Vegas. Moscone is pretty much under construction for the next few years. Um, you're going to be here for a couple more years. Yes, we're and here for a couple more you years. You got to manage this growth in this community. What's how do you do that? What's what's the key keys to that? You know, I think first of all, it's about really making sure you're connecting with your customers and your partners, and it's about experiences, right? It's making sure that you're getting them the rich content. This is a technical conference, so we're going to be measured by did we showcase and engage our audience with the right kind of technical information, give them hands-on access to the things that they want to learn and further their careers. And you know, I always use that. It's like we got to stay close to our customers. So, any feedback that you've heard? positive uh, areas to work on. What are your thoughts? And as yeah. you look back now, it's day three, looking out over the past few days and weekend. Uh, I'd say one of the things I'm most proud of, and I am seeing it in the Twitter sphere, is the fact that we had a lot of customers do the talking. Customers do the showing. There were over 100 customers here this week on panels, in labs, in keynotes, on videos, all talking about their experiences. And this group of people, they want to hear from their colleagues and their peers. So I think customers really helped us this time tell our story and help people understand what does this mean for their business. So I think that was good. A lot of customers coming on today on theCUBE, so you know, continue to watch if you're out there. Um, I got to ask you the question, because one of the things that I, I, every, every CUBE uh, event, I always have my little puzzle pieces I want to try to figure out oh, where, no. the, where the puzzle <laughs> corners are. And I've been asking all the VMware executives um, kind of 
hidden question, but it's basically this. What does VMware stand for? And I've been kind of getting a couple different answers, so you're obviously CMO, so you're going to be right on message. I want to get your thoughts on that. But before you answer, the best answer came from a former VMware employee, Steve Herod, who is a CTO, now he's a venture capitalist, and just off the cuff he just said, VMware likes to um, make complexity go away. They want to simplify yeah. complexity and create abstraction layers, and that's essentially the theme of the show here. Um, so is that, how do you guys talk about that? Because the customers want to see the direction of VMware. What is the official messaging? What is, is that, is he on target? I mean, he said, you kind of made a comment like, it's in the DNA of VMware. I, I would that. agree that, you know, simplifying complexity is in our DNA. I think it, it's a little bit hard to say that today's IT world, though, is simple. I, I think we all have a long journey to it's really complex. make <laughs> IT simple. I think we're about unleashing the innovation from IT. And in order to do that, you have to simplify the complicated so they can focus on the strategic, right? But I would say at our core, what we're really about is how do we unleash that potential yeah. and remove obstacles, simplify complexity to ensure they can yeah. contribute to their businesses with the most impact at the accelerated pace as possible. And that's why I think Pat's cross uh, cloud is interesting because that is certainly probably one of the most complex things to do. Absolutely. To do the cross cloud. And only getting more complicated. I think that's what we're seeing now. You know, fast forward, the, the cloud era is maturing, but what we're finding now is businesses have many clouds. They have SaaS applications. They have their private cloud. They have multiple public clouds. They have managed cloud services. And we know, we've been down this route before in the old compute server world. Managing these silos can become extremely complicated. So I think right now we're already thinking about how do we drive this and simplify this. So the other comment from our analysts uh, um, kickoff this morning and breaking down kind of the, the VMworld ecosystem and VMware, and I'd like to get your thoughts on kind of the internal VMware conversation, because I know obviously the Dell transaction uh, with EMC is going to be on the 7th, so that's public now. So, but VMware seems, as David Floyer said, is unleashed, and Michael Dell's making a commitment to VMware that's pretty sincere about being independent and partnering. Well, I'm and glad it kind of seemed like EMC kind of had that invisible hand. As I didn't say this, David Floyer said this, but share some of the VMware, because this is in the DNA, is to be independent, right? You're right, it is definitely in our culture, and I think Michael has been extremely consistent. I've been with him in many meetings, both public, private, and he has never wavered from his commitment to support VMware's independence, to support our ecosystem, and to really open up opportunities for us to grow at our full potential. And I, I, we all have partnered with Dell for a decade, right? This is not new to us, and we have a great relationship with them regardless of this acquisition. I think the opportunities in the doors are going to open even further. There's a lot more we can do together, but I really feel we've got a really good balance. Yes. He knows that our ecosystem is the core success factor for us. So ecosystem is a big, big part of, of the success. So in your definition, what is the ecosystem 2.0? I think the ecosystem involves a variety of things. First of all, there's emerging technologies, there's service providers, there's CISOs, there's the telcos, um, there's ISVs, there's the SaaS providers, there's the two-tier distribution, the channel partners, the people who touch the customers, there's the consultants. I mean, I think it's just all evolving with us kind of in one yeah. big tornado, you know? I think it's all those things together. <laughs> it's a lot of growth and it's, it's not a moving parts. No, and how about containers? That's a, you know, a whole other dimension, right? Stu and I were saying the container buzz, I was talking to Jerry Chen last night and said, like, last year was all about containers, only one session, the cloud native session yesterday. They did talk about it, but it, it didn't dominate the show like it did last year. The cross cloud really kind of was great and obviously the end user computing stuff seems really compelling. Yeah, I think things kind of ebb and flow, it depends what's really new and so you know, there's kind of different focuses each year. Right, so give us the internal um, or, or marketing philosophy now that you have stuff clicking together now uh, with the product side, you see the NSX with vSphere playing nicely. So a lot of stuff, vSAN is exploding. Um, the, product, the products are clicking. Absolutely. And so there's some Great paperware traction. that Pat announced. Okay, we're gonna, we'll dig into that later. But how does that get marketed now? The product team's going to do it? Because yeah. it's, it's interesting. They're standalone products but also work well integrated. Yeah, you know, we're at this very interesting chasm and I would say we're kind of in our teenage years right now in my analogy in that when these 
products, let's take Virtual San or NSX, when they're first coming out the door, they need to be incubated and they need almost like startup attention. And as marketers, we wanted to give them that really dedicated focus. But it's time for us now to grow into our 20s. And what we need to do is to be more solution oriented and we need to be more industry oriented. Look at verticals and help yep. our customers associate what's the impact in my world, whether it's retail or it's government or it's healthcare. So you'll see marketing at VMware shift so to more solutions. Vertical solutions. And verticals, yes. And by line of business kind of thing going on, more yeah, mature well, marketing. Cross businesses, I think it's really, at the end of the day, our customers don't think about our line of businesses. Yeah. They think about what business problems are they trying to solve, and they, you know, whatever business units we have is irrelevant to them. I was talking to some of the VCs last night at that uh, Lightspeed party, and, and a lot of Silicon Valley VCs were there, and I said, you know, there's no Gartner Magic Quadrant for this horizontal solution set. So, you know, usually you have the Magic Quadrant with, you know, the leaderships uh, by categories, but now you have this new kind of disruptive solution set, which could be a vSphere here, there, and kind of stuff kind of cobbled together, integrated. There's no Magic Quadrant for that, so it's really hard for customers to find out the playbook. Right, and yeah. we have to make that really simple for customers. I also think that's the potential that VMware has, which maybe is unique to a point product startup, that they have one product. We can put these things together for even more impact, more value, and a more seamless experience, because I think that's key. It's got to come together as an experience. Final question, Robin, what are you going to take away uh, from VMworld this year? What are you going to take back to uh, the ranch? What are you going to digest? What are you going to share with your, with your uh, team and your colleagues uh, that you've learned from this show? You know, I think we're really, we're executing. I think we've created a great experience. I think we've attracted the right kinds of attendees. You know, this is just the first of many because we roll this program into Barcelona in six weeks. Then we roll the following week all over Asia. I'm off to Mumbai, then to Beijing. We're just going to roll through Asia through December. So the key is, we're on to this, right? The content is right, the cross-cloud architecture is really resonating, the cloud foundation, it makes sense. Workspace One, we just got to stay the course, help make this stuff really simple and clear for our customers and partners. That's great stuff, it does make a lot of sense and, and it's got clarity and you can see the 20 mile stair, the straight and narrow and uh, congratulations on a great VMworld. John, thank you so much, appreciate it. Robin Matlock, CMO here inside theCUBE, live at the Hang Space in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center for VMworld 2016. You're watching theCUBE. Thank <laughs> you.